Hi, this is Steve Barton for Solid Rock Machine Shop Incorporated. Today we want to show a simple method that you can use to protect the tabletop of your milling machine. If you've been around milling machines for a while, you've probably seen machines where the tabletops have been really beaten up, really abused, and you know it's not been taken care of. One of the reasons is because they leave it exposed, they do not protect it. They'll take things like <coughs> files, they'll drop them down on the machine, drop them hard, they're lead hammers, brass hammers, ball peen hammers, whatever. From time to time you'll probably drop your tooling, you got carbide inserts, they'll dig into this steel, you'll leave all kinds of imperfections that get beat up. Resale value on a machine like that's going to go down if the table will beat up like that. People will look at it and assume that the machine's uh, not been very well taken care of. One other uh, benefit if you would protect the tabletop of your machine, if you have an unexposed machine and you're cutting material from whatever operation, whether it's milling, whether it's drilling, tapping, anything that you're removing material, you're making chips, and the chips will flow and they'll eventually fill up the T-slots. When the chips start packing in on your T-slots, they can be a little bit difficult to get out. A lot of people will grab their air holes, they'll start shooting the air, and then chips will start flying everywhere. It's dangerous. You can have the chips go in your eyes, people walking by, chips go in their eyes. If you <coughs> make some guarding to go on the tabletop, uh, you can eliminate all these issues. We've taken this hard panel board. It's cheap, it's inexpensive. Go down to your local lumber yard, you can buy that. We cut it into the lengths that we need. We cut the shape on this end to match our vise. We mount two blocks over here that will fit in the T-nut slots. And then you can come over, <coughs> slap that down, take this one over here, put it down. Now if you want to keep the file by your machine, hammer, if your cutter accidentally drops, it hits the wood, it doesn't, more likely it won't damage your inserts, uh, it'll put a little mark on the wood, but it'll protect the tabletop. <clears throat> One of the other issues that we have, uh, in West Michigan, we've got high humidity in the springtime. The temperatures are such that we can't run our air conditioner to take away the humidity. <clears throat> and if you don't have a dehumidifier, which we do now, but if you don't have one, uh, what will happen is eventually <coughs> your table surface is, is going to get all surface rust on it. And then it's going to look bad, it's not going to be good. The nice thing about using uh, these boards, you can take a uh, paper towel, you take this mobile uh, number two way oil, Pour some on the rag, get it, I can get it pretty liberal as you can see. <clears throat> Wipe down the tabletop, get it coated real good. And you can mount the panel board over, and now you've got rust protection underneath. And you don't have to worry about getting an oily mess on your hands and everything. It's underneath the board. You're protected from rust. You're protected from chips. Your chips start coming from your metalwork. They land on this board. And then you can just take a simple brush, brush it off a little light air hole, and blow it off. Either way. One of the things uh, that you may have noticed if you're watching is that these boards are different lengths. And the reason we do that is because we like to offset our vise from center. And if we do that, the boards will have to be two different lengths. The reason we offset the vise off center is because if we put the vise on center and kept it there, our wear area would be typically in this area right here on the vise, within about that six inches. So after years and years of use, all of your wear is going to be in that area. You're never using the area out here 
out here. So that's like brand new. The area that's in this six inches for your ball screw, your waves, your ball nut, all of that is getting wear in it. So now, if you tighten your machine up after it starts getting sloppy for this area, it becomes really tight in these other areas. So what we do is we mount our vise off center and from time to time what we'll do is we'll take the vise and we'll shift it. Instead of being this direction, we'll shift the vise over here. And then what we'll do is we'll take the short panel, stick over here, the long panel over here. What happens then is we can extend the wear area instead of being in the 6 inch, we can have our, our, our wear area much longer. We can get more life out of the machine, uh, we can keep it uh, tighter in a longer stretch rather than a short, it works very well. Last week we showed a simple guard that we made for the chips to keep them from flying at you. Uh, you pop that up there. We made two other cards out of the extra material we had. I, I got some cracks in them uh, from where I was drilling the holes. I wasn't as careful as they should have been. But you can uh, stick those over like so. Uh, these are simple to make. You just take a block of scrap steel, drill some holes in there, a couple washers. Uh, now you got a movable guard. You can move them wherever you want. Even if you have them like that and you just want to set this up on either step, something that's more movable, you can. What we're going to do is we're going to take a cut just to demonstrate the effectiveness of the chip card and the tabletop. This is a homemade cutter that I've made uh, many years ago. I have three different sizes. They're all built on an R8 shank. They're using the Miltec square cutters. Uh, those are some pretty awesome cutters. They got a 20 degree shear angle. Uh, they're a high rake on the front. And uh, they leave an excellent finish and they can really hog some material. So right now I'm going to get this set up. I'm going to turn the phase converter on. I'm going to get this set up and we'll take a light cut and then we'll take a little bit heavier cut. zoom up on that atom you can see that we have an excellent finish on this. Uh, I'll set my did or knee it, I'll set it at zero. We took roughly a ten thousandths cut on there. I'm gonna back it off about ten. I always like to turn my cutter back on, keep them off, I don't want to hit the metal. I back it off ten before I come back because I don't want my inserts dragging on the cut. I always want to start my cut at this direction over here. The reason I do that is because the cutter is spinning in this direction and it will throw the chips away from the machine. If I was going to cut from this end, the cutter would come that way and it would throw the chips at me or at other people that's in the area. I'd rather throw it back. So this is the reason I will cut from that direction.
We take a 50,000th depth to cut on the block. You can take heavier cuts than that. Uh, these uh, cutters, like I say, they're very good at removing stock. Adam is zooming up right now to show you a 50,000 depth of cut, and you can see the finish is pretty much identical. And again, I love these inserts. They're some of the, my, my favorite ones out there. When you're using a cutter like this, you always want to pull it up as high in your quill, lock the quill down. Uh, sometimes you'll see people, they'll, they'll have these big cutters, big fly cutters, They'll have the quill all the way down, all the way extended. And they're doing it so they don't have to wind the knee up and down. This is not a very good idea because now you get all this leverage with a lot of pressure down at the bottom. Uh, and this is how your heads come out of trim. It's how it's doing a lot of damage. You don't have the rigidity that's needed for these cutters. So you, a good principle, a good idea is always to have your cutter sticking up high. Lock down nice and tight. Keep everything as rigid as you can. You notice that the chips, they're flying on this tabletop. This is simple to clean. You could just take a, a brush, and brush them right off. If you're real careful with the air holes, you can just give it a light blast. Doesn't take much at all. And now your tabletop is clear of the chips. Your tabletop is protected by the guards. Uh, this, this setup works real nice. Uh, it eliminate a lot of timely uh, a time that you will use in cleaning the chips out of your key slots. This will protect you from that. The guarding will protect you from having these chips hit you in the face, hit you on the arms. I've been burned numerous times in the past when I wasn't using chip guards where they'd fall and they'd hit my arms, my hands or whatever. Anybody that has done uh, much milling at all knows exactly what I'm talking about. So if you get the proper guarding, It'll make life a whole lot easier on the mill. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, come back. Uh, we're planning on about every two weeks. We're having uh, a couple more videos on some short little tips and tricks. Uh, if you like the video, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.